What's up, guys? Action Fills Action 46 Racing Network once again for part two of the diecast review. And we're coming down to the last three cars. Starting with Chase Elliott. This is actually my cousin's favorite driver, and I'm glad he still is. And, um,. And I'm hoping he stays with Chase Elliott. Due to the fact, you know, he doesn't like the teamwork that's been going on at Hendrick Motorsports. Which, to me, I got no problem with. But, I like Hendrick no matter what it takes. Because right now, all four drivers are in the playoffs this year. And what kind of familiarizes me is Chase Elliott drove this car, North Worksboro, number 9, Freight. Auctions number nine Chevy SS now, Chevy Camaro SS. Now this car is pretty to me it looks basic. I don't care about basic because you know my cousin likes black and I got no problem with black. They should have put like a little bit better nine, but you know it's a bar it's a borrowed super late model. The reason why I say keep saying Super Late Model, look how low they are compared to a cup car. And the way that thing kicks out a little bit in the back. Kind of reminds me of an old school Super Late Model back in the 90s. This to me is what I call a local favorite in North, North Carolina. Who started this whole thing in the Cars Tour is... Beyond me, I liked Chase Elliott. I respect Chase Elliott. Do the fact I understand he's a he's a fan favorite. I mean, I understand the voice of mine's is kind of disappointed, but you know, I I I don't dislike the guy. It's just that because Chase Elliott's mindset is too small for you know. To focus on the fan base. He should know better than just becoming. When you become a champion. Do not let that get to your head. Well. Since he won in the Hooters car. On the last race. For Hooters by the way. In Texas this year in the spring. This guy has to understand. You know basically. Just make sure you don't get it. Into your head. Knowing the fact that you're a one time champion. You could get more. You're still young. You can still win races. Don't let that stop you. This guy won't stop winning. That's the good part. Him, him Between him and Larson, I think it's going to be between a good tie. A good, decent tie between him and Kyle Larson. What kind of sucks is that... I don't know if... I know Lionel did the big version of Kyle Larson's uh, super late model. I understand the box says late model. I understand. I understand people saying, oh, you can, just, you can keep saying late model. To me, it's a super late model. He didn't stop racing these cars yet. He was at North Smyrna Speedway. In the beginning of this season, before the Daytona 500, he was there at North Smyrna racing this car. I don't know what happened. Um, But... There was a some sort of weird, awkward situation that happened. I don't think it was I don't think it was his fault, but in that race I saw it on YouTube. A local short track video uh, photographer was showing was sh it was showing him somewhere in the mid pack in New Smyrna before Daytona 500. He was there in this car, the freight number nine, Chase Elliott, and uh, he qualified pretty mid-pack for some reason i think the car wasn't set up right he raced and all of a sudden something big happened in front of him he got involved so but he'll be still racing in that car uh it hasn't been scheduled yet but he, he's racing for fun in the late model for sure and uh <clears throat> also talking about late model junior cannot stop running those late models man i mean when the cars tour came out he started Putting out, you know, new opportunities for guys. And then, all of a sudden, he comes out saying this year, I'm going to keep racing. I'm going to keep racing, you know. I can't deny that. And then, all of a sudden, Tractor Boat said, let's do one more. Let, let's do another die cast for the junior fans to get. 
I picked this one up right away the moment I saw this car. The white number three with the orange number font. This car is awesome. Compared to the other two Bash Pro Shops and the white mom and pop car, my brother likes this car. This version of the Dill Jr. car. Right, Simon? This is your favorite? Oh, yeah, it's the white and orange one. The white and orange one. My brother really likes it. Bash Pro Shops, Tracker Boats, Camaro for Dale Earnhardt Jr. I gotta find Carson Quapple's version. It's black and black. Number eight. But what's funny is that Jr. actually had a driver for the 88 car. Who, none other than Sammy Smith. Sammy Smith was there for the Cars Tour in North Worksboro this year. I don't know where he finished, but he had a nice looking Sundrop car. Don't get me wrong. He had a nice looking red Sundrop. Very brand new flavor, by the way. I like that color. That red. Something vibrant, you know. But this one couldn't stop taking the cake. <laughs> Him and Carson Quapples had a deal with Bash Pro Shops, Tracker Boats. They said, let's race to each other in Winchester last year. And uh, he, he had Providence in that number three orange and white. Chevy Camaro. I like that orange mask or mustache. <laughs> the orange mustache on the front of the car. It's a catfish. That's what they call the Camaro. They gave it an orange mustache. With the bright orange. Number three on the roof. And big. Oh, by the way, this is actually last year's car. <laughs> he ran an Xfinity Series in Homestead. I can't blame Junior because it's been a long time. And what I like about it is they put his initials in the back with the team motorsport team on the back. He couldn't stop racing these cars for God knows how many years. And he went back to his old ways of racing in the, in the late models. This car stuck out as a way of symbolization. Carson Quapel, Dale and her Junior were at the same track. Same color, by the way, white and orange. Carson Quapel had the same thing, but he had the orange number eight until he had the black with the white number eight. Same car. Only thing is, hit Carson's car was black when down the road in 2023. But look at the car, man. The late model. You cannot stop talking about it. This car was never stopped talking about it. And then, by the way, this is the weekly series. The Cars Tour. Late model. I just kind of... They had this car in iRacing. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I know a lot of junior fans are probably looking at this like, damn, I should do that. I should do that color scheme, right? It's awesome. Well, that's when the next car comes in. The last and final car that I'm going to do a diecast review of. Oh, by the way, comment down below if you guys want to see retro or new school or maybe a bit of both. Comment down below if you, wanna, you guys want to see it. After this video is up, I'll say it fully. Last, and certainly my not least, everybody remembers this car from the iRacing, the iRacing program. Dale Jr.'s number three Sundrop Chevy Camaro late model, 2023. That 2024 uh, Cars Tour banner on it. And also, don't get me wrong, this sponsorship has been with him since... Back in his 90s, when he was young, a teen. Guy looking for a way to get into the NASCAR ranks. Just like his daddy did. Well. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s. Number three, some drop. Chevy Camaro late model. This car had a lot of people talking on iRacing. This late model really set the tone for the Cars Tour. Junior said it the best. This tour starts you off in the right direction. You have to start off slow, work your way up. Like everybody would do. Just like Josh Berry. You have to work, you have to earn your stripes in every NASCAR game. I would like to see this car come. Mm -hmm. I like to see this car come in the new NASCAR game, the Cars Tour Late Model, in a way that nobody would expect. Just like how they did in iRacing. 
which in, which in term I have an update about. iRacing just set the standard high. And this one is going to be big for you guys if you guys are listening. I got this information from Nebin, which I got to give credit to because Nebin is a good person to watch. He read a he read a certain article on iRacing, which I know you guys can't find it, but you can. And I've been found this article that I didn't know that this is going to happen, but down the road it will, this year, that we're going to be expecting the 2003, that's right, the year is setting true, it is excelling very fast. Everybody has been commenting, when is this, when is this 2003 car coming out? Not the, not the late model, I'm talking about the 2003 car. I'm talking about is 2003, meaning this cup car right here, that's Junior's. I saw an article that everyone was reading on that these cars are coming to the iRacing program. I'm talking about this red car right here, this 2003 to 2004 NASCAR cup car. And I was in shock when he read it. They were already, like, literally digitally... And laser scanning these cars. I don't know how the hell they... I, didn't, I don't know how in the world that that news didn't break out. But Junior went on went on Twitter. Told all his fans to say, Hey, listen, guys. I don't know if you guys know this, but I don't know if the news broke. But Iris is actually laser scanning one of these babies. I was like, wait a minute. Laser scanning. Meaning they're going to put that in the program. Yes. And as you see here, I custom made... <laughs> like Dale Jr. is like... I don't know, California or Daytona style, like, cup car style car. But when Nebens read that whole article about this car being laser scanned, my jaw just dropped to the floor and I couldn't even pick it up. When I heard that, when I heard in the article that they were laser scanning this car from the NASCAR Hall of Fame, it just blew me up in the head, it just my head blew up out of my my brain just blew up out of my head like so that article didn't blow up until junior said oh by the way nascar fans we're expecting to see this car soon in the fall of 2024 i was like what so after they surprised us with this car the late model then i racing just sneakily went to nascar hall of fame they taped up harvick's car like, every degree of the car that they wanted to scan. And not only they scanned this car, the Chevy, but they scanned the Ford. I was like, what? And not only that, then iRacing just hit us with another one. They said, oh, by the way, this car's not going to come with just the short track package, the road course package, and an intermediate. This car's got 800 horses. I hope you guys understand, this car's got 800 horses. Then they slammed us with this. Oh, by the way, this car's going to have the Daytona and Talladega set up as well with the big-ass nose in front of it and the, the I think, a slightly taller sport in the rear. I was like, yes! Let's get this party started. But when I heard that the month was going to be a little later, I was like, oh, well, I mean, they needed time anyway because these, these cars are, like, sitting in, in NASCAR Hall of Fame for God knows how many years. Like, two, 2003 and 2004 were the, actually the years that this car was going to come to set formation. As a matter of fact, 2005 was actually the last year of this car, the Monte Carlo. Until they brought up the 2006 version, which looks like a freaking sissy when you come and look at it. But this car really set the standard because um, this, car had eight, this car had 800 horses. Not the restricted play one, but the, the intermediate, the Walkers Glen, and the short track package. This car had an 800 horsepower advantage compared to the actual, you know, Daytona and Talladega. But when I heard about the Daytona and Talladega setup, I was like, whoa, we're going to be hearing the restrictive plate noise out of these things again? In iRacing, how are you going to get it? How are you going to get the noise from that car if you just finished getting the 800 horse one, which is the intermediate, the road course, and the short track setup? Well... My best guess is they went to RCR and they got one of those cars, the Talladega and Daytona setup, from the RCR themselves. Because, and the Ford one is the same thing. The only difference is, I think Roush or Penske might have a lingering number 2003 car somewhere. 
I'm not too certain. Maybe Robert Yates, the panic. No, actually, Robert. Actually, that was Matt Kenza's car that they scanned. If you guys look, find it. Nebens had it. He read the article. The 2003 through 2004 car. It was this one and the Ford Taurus. Which I was like, bring it on. Bring it to the, to the schedule. Well, we're going to have to wait a later date for these babies to come on iRacing. So, all that said and done, you guys comment down below. If you guys want to see more diecast, new or old, comment down below. When this video goes out, I hope you guys enjoy. And keep subscribed because we got more yet to come. This is my final day of car, NASCAR diecast collecting. Today is my final day. I'm glad you guys were along for the ride. And I hope you guys out there listening on this. Make sure what you're doing. Put decals on your diecast the right way, not the wrong. And let me tell you this much. It's been a good ride since 2001. Collecting NASCAR diecast for the longest time. Until now, 2024. Diecast collecting to me has been an art form. Ever since when I was five years old. And yes, Nikki, thank you for the pictures you've been giving me, man. These pictures have never lost coloration or anything. I I give you a lot of condolences, my my good sir. So is William Boucher. I hope you're listening to this man. I'm glad to see you. So is my brother, my father. And everybody. And oh yeah, by the way, if you're wondering what car I like, William. It's that baby right there. <laughs> the City Chevrolet car. And then mm, mm, the, the triple paint schemes I like is. this. The first one is that one. Second is that one. And the third and final car is that one. But you cannot beat City Chevrolet, baby. Action 46 all the way, man. I thank you very much, William Boucher and Flash Racer. And all you guys out there that are watching, I thank you very much. It's been a long ride. 2001, man. That was a really good year. Those cars looked badass. And and I I can't stop fathoming. I, I still got my 2001 through 2002 cars in a box i hope you guys comment down below if you guys want to see old school and new school i got no i know i got no qualms comment down below the comment box is open and uh and still i'm still i'm always gonna be doing nascar reviews this is my final diecast collecting it's over for me but the reviews are gonna keep going that's for sure you guys are enjoying it and i hope you guys never forget I'm always going to be around. You're always going to hear this voice. This voice is going to be everywhere in your membranes. You guys never give up. Keep going. Keep going forward. Keep doing whatever you like to do. I don't care. Like Your future takes you whatever it takes you. Not the wrong way, but the good way. If you guys like to work, work. If you guys like to just hang out with friends and just do your best thing and enjoy life. That's what it's all about, man. Don't do the wrong things like taking drugs. Drugs is not good for you. Smoking is not good for you. Drinking alcohol is not good for you. That's the bad. Those are the bad ways. You don't want to go that way. You rather go good way. Find a job. Work. Work in a bodega. Hell, I mean, get your own company. Invest in a house that you really want. <laughs> you really, you really want to work for. That's that's another thing. Also, invest in your money to get food, water, supplies, things that you need. In your fridge, your house, hell, I mean, even your job, p pencils, paper, I mean, sheesh. I don't have to tell you, you guys have to figure it out yourselves. But that cast collecting to me has always been an art form, and this is one way of doing a send-off. A perfect send-off to a great cherishment moment. I started watching For Race Fans Only. Now that's a show they should bring back, but the fact of the nature of you know diecast collecting to me was a a beautiful way of saying thank you for you for you guys, and I couldn't stop saying wow, like 
this is where it stops from here on out. I mean, heck, I started die cuts collecting since I was five years old. So, I thank you guys so much. Four year accomplishment from through on through. A four year anniversary of Action 46. Next year. Next year's a new name. Action 46, Motor Madness. Wanted to get help from my brother. We'll, we'll, we'll hopefully put a little brand new background into it in the YouTube channel. My brother started a new channel, but I can't tell you what the channel is. He's got to tell you. You're going to have to find it. It's going to be hard, but never never give up finding. William Boucher, a message to you, my brother. Keep on rolling, man. Your life is just starting. A new chapter is about to start. Ticket to granite. Never give up, man. And oh yeah, the setup I gave you? You could keep it. <laughs> I'm still gonna keep mine. So you could keep my version. Never forget, my man. Keep rolling. Thank you very much, everybody. And I'll see you guys in the next diecast review. Old school and new school combined. Nostalgia never gives up, man. And oh yeah, my NASCAR Heat 5 videos are not done. My career is about to begin. Let's do it, boys and girls.